two years since COVID-19 was first reported in the U.S. Now with one million lives lost nationwide, scientists and health officials are still learning about its long-term effects on the many more who've survived. Hundreds of thousands of Americans are so-called COVID long haulers, some battling crippling symptoms well after their diagnosis. Broadway conductor Joel Fram is one of those long haulers. You might remember we spoke to Joel last month about the support that he was getting to help with his symptoms. And Joel and Dr. David Petrino, the director of the Rehabilitation Innovation for Mount Sinai Health System, are both joining me live now to talk more about this. And Dr. Petrino, I want to start with you. Your team has treated thousands of long haul COVID patients. Um, what has your experience been and what do you think is unusual about how this has all unfolded from when you started until now? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that the biggest challenge here has been that we have an entirely new chronic condition that is causing severe disability in actually millions of Americans um, and tens of millions of people worldwide. Um, and there's been so little of a response initially to allow people who are struggling with these symptoms to access adequate care. And we need to move fast to improve that. Now, according to the Journal of the American Medical Association, 10 to 30% of Americans who get COVID experience these kind of long-term symptoms. So can you just briefly explain what long-term COVID is and what some of the more common symptoms are? Yeah, absolutely. We we think about long COVID as something that we would call an infection associated chronic illness. So we don't quite understand the underlying cause that is, is causing all of these long-term symptoms, but it leaves individuals uh, who had an acute COVID event with extreme persistent fatigue, something we call post-exertional malaise, which is a worsening of symptoms after exertion, cognitive impairments, um, heart issues, lung issues, and also a number of other very personalized symptoms. Um, at last count, we were tracking over 200 symptoms affecting 10 different organ systems. And I know these effects can get pretty serious, debilitating. Uh, Joel, I wanna go to you on that. When did you realize that you were ex experiencing these symptoms post COVID and what were they? So I, came down with COVID in March of 2020, and it took about three weeks uh, for me to get over that initial bout of COVID. And then for about a month, I actually felt like I was getting better. I was doing yoga. I was doing um, an aerobic exercise plan. But I remember it was a 28-day exercise plan, and on day 26, all of a sudden, it was like someone flipped a switch my body just could not get through the first five minutes of the aerobic exercise. And I remember having to just lay my head down on my kitchen table. The fatigue was crushing. So for me, in the next couple months, the fatigue was really bad. I developed ocular migraine in my left eye. My joints would swell up. Um, and I would also get breathless doing very normal things like walking up the stairs, you know, from the subway. So it was really scary because I thought I was done with COVID and I realized fairly quickly that these symptoms were persistent. And not only were they persistent, but they were really interfering with my day-to-day -day activities. I know it, it's been a very long journey for you to get to where you are now. One, how long did it take to connect the dots that this was uh, long COVID that was affecting you? And what was the process of rehabilitation like? Well, in many ways, I am very, very fortunate. Um, my father was a doctor, my sister is a cardiologist. So I actually had access to medical knowledge. Um, also, I am pretty strong in terms of patient self-advocacy. So I was doing the research myself. Um, but I would say by the summer, by June, I was convinced that yes, this was long COVID. And I remember um, I actually heard about the Mount Sinai Long Haul Clinic. And so I called them and they were unbelievably nice. And they said, listen, this is exactly why we're here but the next appointment isn't for six months. So I really had six months of waiting in order to be seen. And this is, of course, because we were in the middle of 
you know, one of the big surges in the pandemic and a lot of people were suddenly experiencing long COVID as well. So they were probably quite overwhelmed, but it was a scary six months because I was getting worse and worse. Um, and when I was at the clinic, I was very fortunate to see um, many specialists, but, and I'm sure you've heard this story before, all of my tests were coming back negative. My heart was fine. My lungs were fine. My kidneys were fine. My brain was fine, which in one way is good news, but it also doesn't explain why you're going through the symptoms you are, and it can be very, very frustrating. And so I was feeling at a dead end. And I think the one thing that people don't talk about enough in long COVID is the mental health issues that arise when you're facing what could be a chronic disease with really no known cure. So I would say that finding Dr. Petrino's clinic where there was definitely a protocol for aerobic rehabilitation was the start of my getting better. Dan, how difficult that would be when you're searching for answers and you just can't find them. Uh, Dr. Petrino, why do some symptoms eventually improve for some COVID long haulers and not others? And how do vaccines factor into all of this? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm so proud and happy that we were able to help Joel and, and we've been able to help hundreds of patients that are, that are similar to Joel. I, I think we need to understand that long COVID is very likely many different conditions. So we have had many patients who respond to rehabilitation in the way that Joel has, and we have many other patients who require a much more gentle and considered approach in, in the rehabilitation process. Um, and so really the big thing that we're struggling with right now is a lack of an understanding of the underlying cause of long COVID. And that's where we need a lot of research efforts right now. So how do vaccines factor in? Does that improve uh, someone's care? Uh, what do long COVIDers have to consider on that front? And what happens if someone like Joel gets COVID again? Yeah, these are all great questions. Um, right now, as we're, we're trying to study uh, the effects of the vaccine on long COVID, um, there doesn't appear to be a solid understanding of whether or not vaccines will prevent individuals from getting long COVID, there's two variables at play. The first is the, sort, the variant of COVID that mm. you get initially. And then the other variable is how many times you've been vaccinated. So right now we're, we're seeing long COVID rates generally drop off, but we're not sure if it's because of the vaccination or because of the variant type. So these are things we need to understand better. But very glad to hear that you are seeing that tapering off. Yes, we're, very, we're, we're really relieved about that, but I still need to stress, we're, we're talking about, you know, still five to 10% of people getting long COVID after an acute infection, which when we look at the numbers in the United States, that is enormous. Yes, still a lot of people. All right, Dr. David Petrino, Joel, thank you both. Uh, and Joel, it's, I know you're not 100% yet, but great to see you doing so well. Congrats on the Tony nominations and excited to see you in action on Broadway in the company. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.